Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about using an ultrasonic thickness tester to test the thickness of the steel hull plates and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Today's video, luckily enough, has a second sponsor, which is Checkline in the US. Checkline sent me this tester, which is a TI-25 LTX, and we're gonna be using that to check the thickness of all the plates on the hull. So it's really kind of Checkline to send this unit for me to test the whole of this hull. So be sure to send lots of love their way for uh, believing in this little YouTube channel. Okay, now before I start using this to test the thickness, I'm gonna go down to my most suspect areas and start cleaning them up so we can get as much of the surface corrosion off and get an accurate reading of how much real metal's left. So here we are again, this is the stuffing box or the stern gland we took apart last week. Now, the hull below the stuffing box has been, you know, it had salt water dripping on it the whole time, so it's pretty corroded. So I'm going to get the needle gun onto it first, get the bulk of the thick corrosion off, then we'll get the wire wheel onto it, clean it up, then we'll do our ultrasonic thickness testing on it. I'm going to set the vacuum up and start getting rid of some of this crud so we can see what we're left with. Another little tip for you is to lock tight the little grub screws that go in the side of the needle gun because they vibrate out pretty easily. Okay, that's about as much loose stuff as the, as the needle gun's getting off. So now I'm going to get into this the wire wheel. I will also brush the underside and then we'll do our thickness testing. So the hole's normally like this with a bit of shell, a bit of old antica or whatever. And so I've cleaned it up to look like this now. So let's go see how thick it is. Before we go and do this thickness test, let's talk a little bit about what ultrasonic thickness testing is. So it works on a very similar principle to say a fish finder, the depth sound of that kind of idea. So ultrasonic is simply a sound wave that's higher than a pitch the human ear can hear, which is about 20,000 kilohertz. And you send it through a material and you'll get a reflection back. And by timing how long that reflection takes to come back, you find out how thick you know, a piece of metal is or how deep the water is, that kind of thing. All different uh, mediums have a different velocity that sound will travel through it. So for example, it says here steel 1020 is 5,893 meters per second. And to compare, water is 1,473 meters per second, so much slower. So essentially the more dense the material, the faster sound travels through it. Now, another thing that affects it is temperature. So it does vary slightly with temperature. So what you do with this check line unit, that I'll show you now, is a calibration process where you're calibrating the unit on a known thickness of steel and you're doing it for the current ambient temperature as well. So if you start early in the morning, it's a good idea to continue to do this calibration as the day heats up. So calibration documents come with it. Then we get the unit itself, which I said this one's the TI-25 LTX, which is specifically for steel only. It's actually really nicely made. I uh, saw online a fair few different models, a lot of kind of cheap plasticky ones, and this one with a metal case made in the US definitely seen the best I could find, so I'm glad that's the one we've got. Here is the transducer, which we press against the metal, and it just connects to the unit with two plugs, so ones you transmit, ones you receive, doesn't matter which way around they go. Then you get a little bit of the coupling solution. You can't have an air gap between the transducer and the metal. So you put a few drops of the coupling solution onto the metal. Then you can press the transducer onto it and know you've got a good connection. It's powered by a couple of AA batteries that live under here. So switch it on. So here you see in the top corner there, 5918, which is the velocity for steel 4340. And 
this is an adjustable on this unit, but if it was an adjustable unit, check line make a huge range of these units, then you need to make sure you've got the right velocity for the material you're measuring. Here we've got a battery level, and then these markers to the left here are saying how often the unit is getting the same reading over and over. So if you get all six bars, it means it's getting a very consistent reading, which means you can have a high confidence in that reading. If you're not getting all six, then maybe you should have a look at what's going on, why you're getting slightly varying readings. And when I say varying readings, I'm talking like multiple times a second, it's sampling. So this is your confidence indicator. Then here, the main display is the thickness you're getting. In this case, I've got it set to millimeters. Also down the bottom here, you'll see it says STL, which is steel. So steel here and your velocity here are telling you the metal you're testing. All right, first thing I do now is zero the unit. So it's like a sort of calibration process. It's very similar to zeroing some digital vernier calipers, for example. If you don't do that, it's going to be out, consistently out by a set amount. So we're getting that amount that it's out by back to zero. To zero the unit, we put the transducer against a piece of metal of a known thickness. And what's a really cool thing about this design is the piece of metal you use for the calibration is the battery cap here. So all we need to do is put a drop of the coupling solution onto the cap put the transducer on there and hit here the PRB0 button. So, get our solution, put a little dob on the top, get our transducer, then once we're holding it down, press that button and we're done. 10.5. Once you lift the transducer off, the final measurement that was read freezes on the display as well, which is a nice feature. All right, let's take our solution and our little check line tool and see where we're at. So looking around, I think this little section here, you can see it's actually a little bit more rust colored because I think the brush has gone over it. It's the deepest pitting. So let's try there first. Dog. All right, so we're getting 3.8, 3.75 with a slight flicker between five and six bars. So I think we can be reasonably confident with that number. And that, as far as I can see, is the lowest point. I'm not sure what these bottom plates started as, but I'm not going to replace a plate that's 3.8 mil if we start consistently get that. So I'm going to do a bit of a survey. We'll go round. I'll move it quite small amounts and we'll check this whole area. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy with that for a few more years for sure. Good news. I was looking through some cruising forums, that kind of thing, as you do when you're trying to do a boat, and I saw a guy had his hull surveyed, and in the survey they said they surveyed 60 points in the entire hull for the steel. I've laid out a little survey grid here just using the dobs of the acoustic coupling solution up front, so I'll show you this. So what I've done here, not particularly accurately or scientifically, but I've put 16 dobs here, just in this little area, and I'm now gonna go and measure all of those. When you look at the cost of getting a surveyor in to survey your hull and do 60 points on the entire hull, when I'm doing 16 in less than a square foot, I think you start to see the value in having your own ultrasonic thickness tester if you own a steel boat and you're doing it up. I'm certainly really glad to have this because you're either going to find a fault you need to fix or have full confidence in certain parts of the boat and be able to relax when you're out boating knowing you've got four mil of good steel or whatever you've got. So from a value point of view, getting a hull surveyed, sure, surveyors have other skills, other knowledge that's really important, not sort of, you know, um, you know, denying that. But from the point of view of being able to check every bit of steel to whatever resolution you want, I think it's a good way to go, dollar for dollar anyway. So it looks like 3.6 is the thinnest point. Um, so I'm not gonna cut this out. I'm gonna sandblast it, epoxy it outside, inside, and just check again each year. I'll be doing a lot more of this testing as we get down to blasting the hull. You know, I think once it's sandblasted, then I'll definitely do quite a good servo of the whole hull. 
as you can see, it's pretty quick. Just, you know, mark out an area with your dobs of coupling fluid, test. You don't have to press anything. You just hold it against it. It knows you're taking a new reading, gives you the measurement. As soon as you take it away, that freezes so you can see what it is clearly. Then as soon as you press it up to a different point, it takes a new measurement. So it's really quick to use. So you can do big areas in a high resolution without burning up too much time. Got to say, it was slightly addictive getting in with the needle gun and yeah, it's noisy. I am in a residential area, so I've got to be careful. Obviously, Monday to Friday, business hours is the only time I'm working on the boat with any noise. Uh, but I'm a little bit worried about the cost of sandblasting the boat. And I'm thinking that, yes, I do need to get it sandblasted because I want the primer to key in really well to the metal. That's one of the major advantages of sandblasting. But I'm actually thinking I might go through with the needle gun a lot more until someone complains. Uh, and uh, I think that's going to make the sandblasting much faster because he won't be there trying to work off shell and, you know, old bits of antifoul. It seems to fall straight down in big chunks. It's not a really fine dust. So I think if you just lay a tarp down, I'll go get my creeper from the workshop so I can actually lie in comfort and move around. See how I go, see how much of this, this crud I can get off so that when the sandblasting happens, it happens quickly and therefore cheaply. I am toying with the idea of doing the sandblasting myself. I think if I needle gun the whole hull and then wet blast it, which seems to be a popular technique amongst DIY steel boat people, then that's probably gonna give a pretty good result. I worry a little bit that wet blasting gives a slightly smoother result than dry blasting, which maybe doesn't key the metal as well for the paint, but I'll do a test, we'll see how it goes. You know, for the sake of a, of a good pressure washer, like a, you know, a, a petrol pressure washer, it's actually half the cost of getting the hull sandblasted once, and at the end of the day, you own the pressure washer. So I don't think you've got much to lose giving it a shot. So what I'm thinking is actually needle gun all the big crud off, pressure wash with sand injection, and also do a venturi feed with some chlorine or something like that to get the salts out as well. I think that's likely to give a pretty good result. So I'll experiment with that next, I think. Well, thanks for watching. I'm gonna push on now and keep needle gunning a fair bit of this hull today. It's Monday, you know, I'm not really in the mood to think too hard and that's the great thing about it. It's just a job you can sort of do mindlessly for hours on end, so I'll push on with that. So big thank you to Checkline for sending me this wonderful birthday present all the way from the US of A. I'm definitely going to be using this a lot more, but I'm going to wait until I've got the whole hull sandblasted, then I'll do the full survey of the rest of the hull. The transom's pretty pitted, so I've got some steel from Hornsby Steel, Dean at Hornsby Steel, to replace that. I'll definitely be doing that down the track. I'm not even going to bother measuring it. It's so obviously pitted, I'll just replace it for now. But the rest of the hull I will check as we go. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you soon. See ya.